Hey, welcome back. I wasn't gonna film any of this, but I found some interesting stuff, so I thought I better chime in. Uh, for no other reason than maybe you'll get a laugh out of it. Let me turn you around. So, first thing you'll notice is that I have this thing lifted back up again. I don't have it going up to the ceiling hoist. It was iffy before, and now I've added a bunch of weight. So I have an engine hoist because I had to cut out a patch here, uh, one of the motor mounts, just like on the other side that you saw in the video a couple videos ago. There's a big rust hole behind it. But as I was cutting, smoke started coming out. I was like, okay, what's what's burning? It's metal. There shouldn't be anything burning. Up at the front, I would have a little bit of smoke just because the motor would leak oil and it would kind of get inside the frame and kind of burn out. But it would go out pretty quickly, and this kept going and going and going. So when I finally got the hole cut out, I had a mouse nest, and that's just part of it. The other part was smoldering, so I set it outside, put an oil pan over it to hopefully extinguish it. Let's see if it worked. Yes, it finally did. This was just burning like a cigarette. It just kept going and going and going, and I put it outside and I'd work and I'd look at it and it was still going. So, thankfully, that has finally gone out, because man, it stunk. I didn't find any dead mice yet, just the nest. So after pulling that out, I thought, okay, so that nest was about here. So I thought, okay, not everything behind here, like this area of the frame, didn't actually dump everything out when I lifted it up to dump it. So I lifted it up, and I hit it, and it's not dumping. And I don't know if you remember in the video, when I lifted it up, this side had all the stuff come out of it. This side, not a whole lot came out. And now I think it's because there's maybe another mouse nest somewhere up here. But I shoved it down as far as I could and it kind of felt like it was pushing something soft. And then it stopped right here where the steering box bolts. There are tubes, basically. That's what these rivets hold. Uh, tubes going through so when you tighten up the steering box you don't crush the frame. So that, I think, is stopping it. So I think there's probably more mouse nest stuff right here and a big pile of rust piled up behind it, I bet. So that's what I was doing. I only had a couple of hours to work between things and I ran out of time. But I just wanted to share that. Thought it was kind of funny. I guess we'll see you in the next clip, which might be tomorrow, it might be in a month, who knows. Catch you in the next one. just cut an access hole. I didn't want to do it. But it was clearly worth it. A bunch of nest in there and a bunch of rust and I'm gonna guess probably the end of a large drill bit. No particular reason. So there you go. The joy of old cars. Yep, I still have this car. I took a day off work today. It's great having a real job with paid days off. And decided to come out and do some work. So let me turn you around and I'll show you what I've been up to all summer. So here's the frame I've been working on. And when I last had you here, I was just probably a little over halfway through the plating process or the wrapping. And now it is done. I've got all three sides on both frame rails completely wrapped. I mentioned in an earlier video that I wasn't going to do anything with the bottom. I still haven't, but I still may change my mind, but there's just not any good way to attach it that I can think of to make it actually, you know, structurally useful. But here's where I'm at. I got body mounts back on, all except for two per side, which I'm going to make out of some little scraps of steel that I picked up this week. Got the engine mounts 
sitting in place that was needed so I could get all these pieces lined up correctly. I've got two pieces of the K member temporarily clamped in place. Uh, this side I care because I'm going to be making this body mount and the same on that side as well as the brake pedal. If you remember I have I got one of these universal hot rod boosted master cylinders and that's going to end up oh I think somewhere around here but it's completely dependent on where there's enough room under the body because that brake booster is taller than the frame and it cannot hang below the frame because this frame is going to rest on the ground. So the master cylinder is going to be somewhere over here. I'm going to have a linkage, but the pedal has to be right there because there's a hole in the floor right here. It has to move in the same arc. I'm trying to maintain the inside factory look as much as possible. That's what I'm out here to do today. I got to make a body mount to replace those, one per side. And I'm going to make two of these out of that. And those go, I don't remember, somewhere around there, I think. Remember this whole K member is gonna be going because it hangs down below the frame. And that does not work on cars where the frame rests on the ground. So that's my job today. I'm hoping I can get all of that finished. And then I think I'm gonna flip the car, or flip the frame back around and start working on the body after that. I gotta get the doors off, get all the glass out so that it's light enough that I can rig up some method of lifting it and setting it on the frame. So I can start cutting out where the step notches have to come through, where the drive shaft is gonna have to fit, where the master cylinder goes, yada, yada, yada. It's a lot of work, buckle in. All right, it's been a long afternoon, but the body mounts are tacked in place. I didn't film making these because I just cut them out of a piece of square tubing. It's not very exciting. There's the other one of those. And there's the passenger side. So that actually means that the frame is done. Of course, there is an asterisk anytime you say something is done. Uh, there will be, you know, brake lines and hydraulic lines run across here. So there's gonna be holes drilled and tapped and clamps put on and it's gotta be painted. I gotta finish running a full bead around a few of these things that I've just tacked into place. Uh, I'm gonna have to put on some bump stops. Uh, I think on the other underside of the frame, I think I've got a few things I need to address under there, a little denser things, but I'm pretty comfortable saying this frame is done. So the next step is gonna to be to spin it around if I can find room in here and put the front suspension back on. Put the rear suspension on and then put the body on. And then we'll see how everything lines up or doesn't. Remember, I've done a whole bunch of custom stuff on here where I've got, you know, body mounts. Every single one of these was removed. All but a few I made and put back on. So I don't know how everything's gonna line up. I'm curious to find out. There is a huge pile of rubber pieces and shims and everything when they put these together. It wasn't uh, CNC welded in the 50s. It was just some guys on the line with jigs and stick welders probably. But I guess that's all I got for right now.
I'm gonna hold this and just splice in the next day right after this clip rather than post it because it wouldn't be much of a video. So we'll see you in the next clip. All right, if you couldn't figure out from the time lapse there, it is another day. Thanks again to my little brother, Ryan. He just helped me out all afternoon. I didn't have any intention in asking for anyone's help, but he just happened to be here visiting my mom, so he gave me a hand. Let me turn you around and show you what we got done. Okay, got the suspension back on and the engine in, which is what I wanted to get accomplished today. Now the purpose of this, I wanted to make sure the motor mounts were still gonna line up after adding an eighth inch of thickness to both sides of the frame. And sure enough, the holes do need to be moved inward a little bit to compensate for that, or outward, I guess. Anyway, you get the idea. So, you know, these are all things you don't wanna figure out after you've got a nice paint job on the frame and then figure out like, oh, I need to start grinding and sanding and whatever, so. That's why there's these assemblies in the middle of all the progress. Um, right now it's kind of sitting at an awkward height. Being that it has hydraulics, I can really only just set it on the ground. And this is at its lowest setting, obviously minus the weight of the car, which should bring it down a little more. If it doesn't, I will have to remedy that because this car will sit on the ground. My best guesses for the weight is what led me to this design so if i was wrong then I get to do some more tweaking because this thing doesn't lay on the ground there's no point to all this okay so here's my transmission adapter and a placeholder 204r overdrive transmission mine is at home and i'm going to rebuild it starting to mock up the rear end if you remember i cut off the original mounts for the lower four link bars I cut those off so I could plate the frame. I'm not gonna put those back on because they were hideous and every time I saw them, it bothered me. So I have to design a piece that goes across here to hold the rear four link bars or the front of the four link bars. Also go across here to hold the transmission at the right angle and also hold the master cylinder right there and also have a way for the drive shaft to not only come through, but have all the adjustability you would need on a car with hydraulics like this. You know, I need 10 inches of adjustability in the back, so there's gonna be a lot of movement. Also, I need a hole for the exhaust. I think I'm just gonna do factory exhaust manifold and a single exhaust, but I really like the look of dual exhausts in the back, and I really like the look of a factory outfit up front, so I don't know. I'll probably have Enough room probably to have two exhausts comes down one side and then maybe cross over back in the back. I don't know. Anyway, I'm rambling. But basically I have to make a big assembly here that can hold the transmission and the four links and the master cylinder and accommodate the drive shaft and the exhaust and the brake lines and the hydraulic lines. And I'd like to have as much of it bolt in as possible. We'll see what happens. So that's kind of where we are. Okay, so that's gonna be a wrap on this video. It was less of a how-to and more of just sort of a update video on where I've been at. Uh, again, shout out to my brother Ryan, thanks again. And I guess this is gonna be it for this video. And depending how the weather goes, it might be it until spring, but we'll see how it goes. All right, well, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.